Welcome to Morelli and my name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by my cousin in North America, Dominic Machado, and our brother from a different mother and different background, Nicholas Brooks, in who's in South London and just got back from Glastonbury Festival, where I heard um, the festival goes mourning the loss of Chris Silverwood from the Shrunker setup. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the first leg of the LPL. It has concluded the candy leg. Um, there's been all sorts of action taking place, which we'll get stuck into. But I think we've got to start off with what has become our personal frustration that this, these games are not on Willow TV, as was promised, and don't appear, at least, as far as I can see, have any sort of broadcaster in the UK. Though I was told maybe, maybe Sony live, but I need to, I'm need i going to have to check that out tomorrow. Um, Dom, it's a not a great look for, for what's meant to be a major global franchise tournament, is it? No, not a great look at all. Um, and I'm thinking about all the analysts who are getting data and trying to figure out, okay, who are the best players? Where, who can we bring in for our squad? And our players are missing out on it. People can't, of course, they can analyze the statistics and all that, but if you can't watch the games, that hampers your analysis, right? Um, it's also, um, it, it's getting worse, right? So last year, it was on Willow TV. The last four years, it's been on Willow TV, and I've been able to watch every single ball. This year, it's not. We have to rely on streaming sources that we can't name um, to get our fix of the LPL. And I think it's a it's a big problem for our players getting notability, getting notoriety. It's a big problem in terms of marketing, right? I think um, the ICC certainly believes that North America is a big market, and we'd hope that Sri Lanka cricket and the people who are you know PG Entertainment think so as well. So it's frustrating for me. Um, it's also frustrating because it's a set of games that are at reasonable times um, from an East Coast United States or so. It's like I can get up in the morning and watch the matches, but they're not available to me or at least only available in ways that I can't really speak of. Nick, how good are you at finding VPNs that are coming out of Sri Lanka? I've got to say, man, VPNs are not my jam at all. And I haven't been operating on full capacity after a weekend at Glastonbury. So this has been a huge personal frustration for me this week. Uh, as Dom said, it's just like you want to put your players in the shop window, right? And for me, this seems to be thus far the best LPL yet. We're seeing loads of great performances and the rest of the world is missing them. And I mean, I'm no broadcast deal guru, but surely if you get to this stage and you don't have a deal in England or the UK, you don't have a deal in the US, I don't think they've got a deal in Australia either. You might as well just give the rights away for free, right? Sell them for five yeah. quid, at least so people can watch them. I mean... You know, we saw in the first game someone like Chaminda Wickramasinghe making a name for himself, playing a great innings, a young guy who next to no one's heard of. And, I mean, wouldn't it be of so much more benefit to Sri Lankan cricket if 20,000 more people were able to watch that? Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are enough diehard cricket fans out there who will follow this competition because it's a good standard. There's um, player names who we recognize and the teams are all pretty even. It's a good tournament. It deserves to be on TV. It's an absolute travesty that it isn't. So I'm always harassing people at uh, Sri Lanka Cricket about the LPL. You know, I'm quite outspoken about how I've loved it. Part of the reason I love it so much is because I followed it from the first ball, right? I find it deeply frustrating it's not available. When I brought it up with quite senior people at SLC, the first thing they did was they sent me various links on YouTube because they thought you'd be able to watch it on YouTube around the world. Obviously, it's geo-blocked. I'm kind of going to go out on a limb and predict that I think within a few days that geo-block might get taken down because I think that there's people with quite senior SLC with all the frustrations we do about it as well, right? This is meant to be their showpiece thing. This mm. Their showpiece domestic tournament, their showpiece franchise tournament. It's meant to show off the, our best players. We know from the World Cup that, you know, the, the team that won it, the teams that got to the to the final stages of it were the teams that had the most number of players in, in 
playing franchise cricket. This is this part of the year feels like quite a big time for franchise cricket because we know we've got the CPL starting soon, we've got the hundred starting soon, we've got major league cricket starting soon, and then there's then there'll be a bit of a break for international cricket, and then it kind of cycles around again, right? I mean, just not having our players being beamed across the world, I think, is a total disaster for absolutely everybody involved. I, like, I, and I think that the easy fix is getting it on YouTube, right? Just yeah. stick it out on YouTube, make it free. There'll be some revenue that will come from it. I don't really understand how live stream revenue works on YouTube. Maybe ask me in a few few years' time, and we've tried <laughs> and experimented with that on this channel. But until you know. Um, I think they're they're totally missing out. Talking about YouTube, if you are watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I forgot to mention that at the top of the show. If you're listening to us in the app, in your podcast apps, hit the follow button, hit the subscribe button, leave comments for us. We love your comments um, as long as they are necessary. Uh, as long as as long as they, I don't want to say you can you can say negative things, but just don't make it personal. I think that's what we want to say. <laughs> about it, right? Uh, uh, um, right. So we get into the action, um, Dom. Who, who's kind of impressed you thus far? Uh, Mr. LPL has been back in the runs, hasn't he? Yeah, Mr. LPL is back in the runs. Avishka Fernando, uh, he played a blistering knock yesterday, right? I think um, KJP scored 100 in that innings, but Avishka's was the best that we saw. Now, I think it speaks really strongly to how much of the block he has in terms of international cricket being mental as opposed to physical, because any time a bowler erred in length, he put them to the sword. Um, and there was just a confidence. He was playing these aerial shots, and some of them were just clearing the boundary, but he wasn't afraid to play them. He had a clear game plan. He knew what to do. It was equally impressive that he did it from the number four slot. So he came in and he absolutely smashed Akila Dunanjaya around, um, took him to the cleaners, and... If he could come in and do that in Sri Lankan colors, play that number four position uh, in the T20 squad, that would be massive. So glad to see him get his confidence back. We're glad to see that he has been um, aggressive, impressive. Though I will say, to my mind, he is the second most impressive batter that I've seen from uh, Jaffna. The most impressive is Patham Nasanka. I am totally sold on his transformation as a white ball monster. Um, Nick wrote about this in in his piece on the uh, on the Merle End newsletter, which you should go read. But if the ball is in his zone, he is going after it, and he's going after it from ball one. Uh, he goes down the ground for sixes, which is brilliantly impressive. He has a clarity of mind in terms of what he wants to do, and it's clear that when he go out when he goes out there in T twenty mode, he just wants to dominate the bowlers and. I just want to be clear for our audience, right? Even though we're seeing this improvement, T20 is a very different game. So sometimes he's going to get Khaled on the boundary ropes. He's going to edge and get caught at slip. But this new aggressive Potham is here to stay. And I really hope that he continues to take a step forward in terms of his attacking and aggressive game. And I hope that Avishka can start to take some of that confidence that he's building up in this part of the LPL and hopefully SL will continue to um, back him. You know, he's only 26. So there's, there's plenty of good years to come. Uh, the other name that kind of, uh, there are a lot of people who've been impressive. Other name that strikes me right now is Chimindu Vikramasinghe, which Nick was talking about left-handed batter with serious power down the ground. Uh, it looks effortless when he's hitting sixes. He's an all rounder can bat in the lower order. He scored hundreds in um, as an under-19 player. He looks really, really talented, and he fits into a role that we were looking for um, after seeing the back of, well, maybe not seeing the back of, but towards the end of Angelo's career, towards the end of Dawson's career, it is a breath of fresh air to see an all-rounder play like that. Um, he has all the talent in the world. He's a big guy for Sri Lankan. That was one of the things that I noticed really well built. Um, his batting seems to be a little bit ahead of his bowling, but I think he can he can get there with with some work. He was someone that really impressed me, and I had never seen play a game before this, so um, I was really impressed by his range of strokes and to do it from a difficult position. Right, they were four down early on, and he was able to rebuild and kind of revitalize that innings. He could hit spin, he could hit pace. Really, really impressive. Uh, 
last guy that I will mention um, that impressed me was Dunith Wallala game. Uh, the thing that really was exciting was the way he was varying his pace, right? He was sometimes ripping balls in excess of 95 KPH and then slowing it down. So that ability to vary speed is so crucial for a slow left arm bowler, right? Because if you're bowling at a consistent pace, you're just going to get smashed out the ground. Um, he's playing with a lot of fire, a lot of passion. He hit a, he had a good uh, knock down the order the other day. Uh, I think he had a couple sixes in that, including one down the ground. So power is improving. I think one question for us to consider with someone like Will Olegay is where do you bat him? I'm not sure you want to blood him as a finisher. I think you might want to give him more opportunities up the order. But those three guys are have been really standout. And, um, you know, three guys who you really want to see improve and do well in the years to come. A uh, lot to go out there. Uh, Nick, any other names you want to chuck in that Don might have missed? And then let's kind of pick it pick through that a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, before I go on to names, just a quick side note. I'd really like to big up the Candy Ground stuff because this has been a fantastic pitch for batting in a really fast outfield it's looked to me like it's a horrible pitch to bowl length on because the ball just kind of sits up and I mean I think that's why we've seen KJP and Avishka both guys who love playing cross batted shots really thriving yeah. and I mean Avishka looked a million bucks didn't he in both of his innings just slugging the ball all around the park uh, in terms of other names I was impressed by what I've seen a guy who I haven't seen before Malsha Tharapati a uh, young leg spin bowler and um, I've got to say, a guy who has taken a lot of heat over the years and has had less positive uh, positivity coming his way, good old Nero Dickweller, man, going yeah. hard from ball one, looking to go aerial, hit everything that's any width that's on offer. He's going over the covers and, um, yeah, playing really a couple of really influential power play innings. And him and Hales, you know, they're kind of diametric opposites, aren't they? Left hand, right hand, little and large. And they look to be a dangerous power play combination for goal. Look, I know we were quite critical a few weeks back when we did our kind of post-auction um, LPL episode about the makeup of that squad. But whoever put those two openers together, was it's kind of genius, right? And I mean, the comeback that we've seen from Dick Waller, it's like the biggest comeback we've seen since Lazarus, right? Um <laughs> kind of, it feels like he's kind of come out of nowhere and he's, I mean, the way he's performing, I'm not saying he's going to be in the squad. I'm not saying if I was to select, I'd put him in the squad, but he's going to end up being, someone's going to have to, his name's going to come up around selection decisions, right? With the way he's playing and the and the strike rate. I want to go back to what Dom was talking about, Avishka and uh, Nisanka. And I want to kind of envelope all of these conversations into it. I want to chuck in, the fact that KJP's come back with 100 as well. And I want to talk about the standard of the tournament because that's what the haters are going to talk about. They're going to talk about, is the standard, how far away is it from international level? And on top of not just the standard, I think we need to talk about the intensity as well. Has it? How close is it to the intensity of international cricket, right? We started off by talking about Avishka when we mentioned kind of high, top performances. I've kind of entered the performance chat by bringing up KJP's 100. Are either of those players getting hundreds in? Is KJP getting 100 in international cricket anytime soon? Is Avishka ever going to do it consistently for international cricket? And is the reasons why these two things aren't happening because the intensity is not there and the standard's not good enough? Dom, what do you think? That's a good question. Um, is it international level quality um i'll be honest here probably not quite i'm not saying it's far from it but i don't think it's quite there i think someone like kjp probably couldn't dominate a slightly more you know slightly stronger bowling units here i think that that would be my thought i think you know kjp at this point in his career is boom or bust he was out for a duck his first innings right i think and then scores 102 in in, in this one um and the thing I noticed with KJP, it's, you know, it's the same old KJP. He's slapping the ball. As Nick said, that ball sitting up on a length, perfect for him to play with and, and uh, play, you know, sort of play both the spin spinners and the quicks quite well. 
Avishka, to be honest, I haven't seen technical improvements, but my thought is with Avishka, it's not a technical issue. It's a mental issue. And that we won't know until he gets on the international stage and gets some runs under his belt. I think, you know, honestly, the best thing for Avishka would be for um, someone to say, listen, you're in the squad. You're going to play for the next 15 or 20 games, whether you score zero, whether you score 100, whether you score 15. We're just backing you, and we want to see what you can do. We want to see what you're capable of. There's no pressure on you. Just go out there, express yourself, play your game. Ask him where he wants the slot in. This slot is yours, right? Do you want to play at four? Do you feel more comfortable playing at four? We saw, you know, this was Mihaela's theory, Grant theory, a few years back, which he and Prod, who's been on our show, have talked about, right? That once the, you know, uh, field spreads out, he feels like he can come in and play himself in, and then the big shots start coming. So is that a future that we can imagine for him? Um, Dick Wella, on the other hand, I think is kind of the opposite, where he's now, not that he's reinvented his game, but he realizes his role in a squad is to play aerially, to take advantage of those vacant, open, awkward spaces in the power play and score as quickly as possible. Um, I think I saw some remark on Twitter where someone said, this is perfect. He scores quickly in the power play and then immediately gets out because he struggles after the power play. So there is that value in having a player who's going to take full advantage of those opportunities. So again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say why, why, why say we should keep him out of the squad when it's potentially something that could feed into a strategy long term. And I think it might be really interesting to contrast a sort of very orthodox Potham Nisanka with, uh, Dick Weller and then maybe bat Chris Almendis at three. I, I, I think it's interesting you call Patton orthodox there because I think the whole Patton journey is that he arrives quite orthodox and then every time you see him, he becomes more and more unorthodox, right? And right. that's kind of what we're, we're encouraging and hoping for, right? I just, I, I, I don't know if, the, if they were to pick Dick Weller again, I think he's going to do a lot more through the. Re- he's going to kind of maintain this form through the rest of the yeah. tournament to have any sort of look in. Right. I kind we're, of we're feel two games in, right? That's that's yeah. the big part, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of. Oh, go on, Nick. Sorry. No, he just he looks to me like I mean we've seen long stretches like I remember one CPL where it felt like he scored like 14 runs all tournament and he looks like he's got to the stage where he's like I've got nothing to lose and I'm just going to go out yeah. there and play freely and I think it's super exciting because I mean looking across the five teams they've all got really dynamic opening partnerships and it puts pressure on guys like Sadira and Kamindu right I mean yeah. the, they you know that they, and Kusel Mendes has hardly scored a run either Chef Daniel hasn't scored any runs yet so suddenly Suddenly there's like eight, nine, ten guys who you're talking about in that those top three, four spots, which isn't a place where Sri Lanka has been in a lot over the last few years. And I think that's something that's really, really exciting. Yeah. And, and the Kamindu point, I think, is interesting. One thing I'm watching is how does he play spin? Because that's where he's tended to get bogged down. And he's gotten out to spin, I think, in both innings he's played. Uh, the flip side of that is I'm also watching him bowl. So he's been bowling more, which I think is really, really good for the team and for his career going forward. Developing that skill will be really important. But I think for Kamindu, it's figuring out uh, game plan number two. We know he looks great hitting that cover drive. We know he looks great playing that flick off the legs. But can he develop those the counter punches when teams bring in spin against him and, and things of that nature? Um. It's yeah. We I think we, we we let's talk about the bowling in a bit, right? Yeah. Because we, we've kind of talked essentially we talked about kind of opening batters, right, in this bit, and and a few kind of all rounders. Um, I'm I'm just going to go out on a limb because I kind of put out the you know how good's the bowling compared to international level, how good the, is the intensity. I reckon from what I've seen, I reckon it's about two thirds off the way to international cricket, right? I think. In, the, in in almost every team, I think there's a, like, kind of, there's generally two international bowlers, like, out and out, intra international bowlers, a, a, a foreigner and a half, potentially, off, off kind of, 
international quality bowling, and then there's somebody else generally who's going to bowl a few overs who's probably not going to bowl internationally or isn't quite fully developed there yet. In terms of intensity, I just think it's impossible to replicate um, kind of international standard, maybe at the top of the IPL. Um, I think that I think that's shown in the fielding a little bit as well. I think we've seen some a, a fair few howlers, haven't we? And yeah. also yeah. guys making chases on the boundary that haven't quite looked like they've had 100% commitment. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. I think, um, and and I think the biggest pressure moment for these Sri Lankan players is when they play for Sri Lanka, right? Because that's when they know the eyes are on them, that everyone's going to ask questions about the decisions they make on the field. So even if we say it is intensity, I think from a mental point of view, especially the Sri Lankan batters, there is that block to get over of, what does it mean to score runs at an international level and to do it consistently? Yeah, abs- absolutely. I, I wonder, I just had a thought there. You know, th- this tournament has seen loads of different owners, loads of different team names in in its five years of existence. And I wonder if actually if they'd somehow managed to keep that, at least the team names consistent, they could have built more for brand, right? Because mm. you kind of feel with their Jaffa team, which has been the most consistent team, um, that there is a bit of kind of momentum and there's a bit of kind of heritage in in playing for for them where they're, you know, the other sides at this stage, I don't kind of feel that they have it, right? I don't think kids are growing up in in Dambler dreaming of playing for the for Dambler Sixes yet. Yet. Hopefully that changes. But um I think we just need a bit of kind of consistency for the tournament and, and it might over yeah. time develop that intensity as well, right? And and I did feel a few years ago that Jaffna had an identity and I still think they've kind of kind of managed to kind of weirdly keep the identity, even though there's been a lot of churn of players and their coaches as well, right? Um, so it's quite interesting. Um, should we talk about bowlers then? We've kind of touched on the batting. We mentioned Kamindu, we mentioned Walala Gay. Um, Eddie Seamers kind of caught, caught your eye, Dom? Um you know, to be honest, it has not been a it has not been a banner tournament for Sri Lankan seamers. Uh, in in that the, the the highest wicket taker for us, uh, Sri Lankan wicket taker in terms of seamers is Shanika, who has been bowling in the power play for Beloved Candy. Which again, let's just wrap our mind ar- around that, right? So he was fourth, fifth bowler, sorry, fifth bowler uh, with Angelo at the World Cup. And now now all of a sudden he is back in this bowling role where he's bowling at the top. And he took, I think, three wickets the other day in the the first six overs. Um, So that tells you a little bit about it. No one is really impressed. Thushara looks a little bit off with his lengths, especially uh, on these pitches. Patirana, I mean, he's he's been firing in some great deliveries, but... There have been wides as well. So no one has really surprised me from that group. But I think we know the quality of that group. We know how good it is. And I think that um, it will continue to do well. I, I will say Isarudana has gotten tonked around the park. I think he went for 60 runs the other day, the $100,000 man. Um, so that investment is also looking a little bit a little bit hairy. He had, he had a good innings with the bat. But, I was going to say, his, bat, his batting looks good, though. Yeah, his batting looks good, making up for it. So, yeah, no no seamers that really impressed me. Nick, anyone impress you? Um, I'm kind of impressed by Kasson Rajita going at 18s because I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise that that was a possible economy to maintain over multiple games. But, no, I mean, it hasn't been a great pitch for the seamers. And, yeah, I was really surprised to see... Shanika bowling in the power play and picking up wickets. Um, I wonder if things might be a bit slightly different at Dambulla because this has seemed yeah. like a kind of a better pitch to be bowling finger spin on and that, especially that kind of fastish, slidey finger spin. I mean, we've seen DDS get through a couple of really economical spells. And yeah, I think that's as much down to the pitch as the quality of bowling that's coming down. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things go in these next phase of games. Yeah, I'm 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 really interested to see how it goes because you know as we mentioned the seamers aren't lighting it up at the moment. That 
you know, if, if a team wants to kind of gather momentum, I know, I mean, Gaul at the top of the table at the moment, we'll talk about that in a bit, but if a team wants to gather momentum, they're just going to get their seamers kind of into the game a little bit more, and I think they'll start to pick up a bit, a few more wins. Um, I've also, you know, Nick talked about the quality of the pitches and the kind of high scores that we're seeing. You know, I'm kind of gutted it's not on television in the UK because people love watching high scoring games, right? It definitely would have attracted uh, yeah. fans to it. So and, it's, it's a... and for us, like, isn't it a delight to see actually like Sri Lankan batsmen scoring runs rather than scratching around? Like, um, yeah. I really enjoyed watching Nuanidu the other day. I know that it's potentially like a match losing innings. I don't know what it was, 40 or 32 in a yeah. 200 plays 200 game, but he played some lovely shots and you see that and you think there's a real player there. So yeah, yeah it's nice to be able to kind of evaluate uh, Sri Lankan batters on better pitches rather than like minefields where they're scratching around for the first 15, 20 balls. Yeah, I think, and, and to another person there too is Shanika, right? Um, when he's able to hit, right? When he has a pitch where, where there are balls that are able to, that he's able to hit, he smashed 46 off of 15. He's looked in absolutely brilliant form. And it reminds you, I know he's been getting a lot of hate these days, just how good he can be um, and why everyone rates him so highly. Uh, the the other thing that that this made me think about is some of the strategy, right? So in these 200 plays, 200 pitches, I am a little bit surprised by the lineups, the batting lineups that are put out there. So for instance, uh, DDS comes out when you've got uh, Asmatullah, uh, Omer's Eye, and Fabian Allen in the shed, right? So and this is Charith is is captaining this side, right? And and someone who people talk about as a future Lunkin captain, right? Um, so in that two hundred plays two hundred, I think it's going to be really important for our players to realize that that requires a certain type of captaincy. Compare that to say um, Dickwella or Thisara Pereira, right? Where Dickwella knows even if I play seventeen balls, if I get forty five fifty runs from that. That is incredibly valuable. Or Thesara Pereira is just, he's been super aggressive with his batting lineup. Um, and I think it's Dumbola, right? Dum no, no, no. It's it's Gaul. One thing that they could do, right, is, and we've talked about this, I know Nick's talked about this, is Lasse Kuspele is, is sitting out at this point, right? Why not use him down the order a bit and let him bash around a few balls? So I think as these scores are going up, Dom, you're obsessed by by that kid, man. You, you keep mentioning him. Like. <laughs> I just want to see him get a chance. You know, he's incredibly talented. We don't we don't have guys who can find the boundary like that. So I want to see him in the side, right? So okay, I'll give you someone. I'm with Dom. Out. I love me some Cruz too. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, look, I, I'm I'm here, all here for it. But you know, I'm just gonna you know we, we don't I don't want to create another agenda, Uncle. Right? This is how the Sith laws are created. <laughs> pull a agenda, yeah. Uncle. The Cruz Pelé agenda, Uncle, like, you know, I, I, we're, we're like Jedi Knights here and you, you'll turn into the dark side and in 20 years' time, you're going to be sitting on the sidelines being like, well, all Sri Lanka's problems could be solved if you brought them into the team. If they brought let, in let, Cruz let them open the yeah. batting and the bowling and made him the captain, right? Look, um, look we, ha we have some players who can do that. So, um, but, <laughs> but, you know, Bonica has been in a lean run of form. He had a horrific run out the other day. A, you know, let let Cruz come in and and hit around a few balls. Yeah, I I, I think we all love to see it. I mean, that it's no slight on on Cruz Pelé, what I just said. Yeah, um, yeah. But with, I think that's the the thing is like, how do you like? I think Sri Lanka tends to think of top like you know, let's fit in as many top order batters. But what you need is you need guys who can hit once you get to that. 100 for two in the 12th over and and letting those guys you know saying okay you know what let's break our order and send up whoever even though we're we're the country who invented that we're the country who invented the floater the pinch hitter there and you know i i just think that we need to lean into that tradition a bit more talking um, about the floater talk, talking about the pinch hitter can we talk about uh, and talking about agenda uncles as well can we talk oh, about yeah. one indy because I feel like he's in having a, a kind of quiet tournament for himself 
right? I was expecting him to be a lot more outspoken in terms of where he batted, but he seems to to not be doing what he was doing for Schlunker at the beginning of the World Cup. And I'm a bit worried about the kind of long-term impact that tournament's have, having on his confidence because I believe that he's a confidence player. And while sometimes I do think he makes rash decisions, I think the more confident he is, the better performances will get out of him over a, a long term. And actually seeing him bat himself at number seven or eight, I can't remember where he was, I think is a bad sign for us. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I think it's without doubt a reflection of where where he is mentally after that tournament, after the couple of ducks and the sort of backlash which came really personally his way. Uh, I think in their second game, he was up to five, which is a good yeah. sign. Uh, I mean, I still think he's without doubt probably Sri Lanka's best hitter, especially of spin and one of the more dynamic strikers uh, on the island in general. So I'd personally like to see him batting uh, three, four, five above Ange and Shanika. And I think hopefully we'll see more of that as the tournament goes on. Yeah. Uh, bowling wise, I mean, he's done okay, hasn't he? Without really kind of stealing the show. I mean, you see uh, Shadab's taken a absolute shed load of wickets and yeah. not gone for too many runs. And you'd kind of expect Hasaranga to be doing the same um i still feel like i don't know is he bowling a little bit slow and flighty and kind of not looking like he's quite got that fizzing energy that he had before uh the injury which was what this time last year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah i so i agree with you nick i think it was good to see him come in at five because i was really worried when he didn't put himself in earlier and i think obviously there's this weird throuple between <laughs> uh, Angelo, Winindu, and Dawson, right? Uh, where do they bat? Who bowls where? You know, all that stuff. Uh, and But, you know, they're in the same squad. They seem to be getting along fine. Uh, but the thing that worries me is his bowling. Uh, Chimindu uh, Wikramasinger smashed him a couple of times uh, for six in that first match. And, uh, yeah, it seems like he's looping it a bit more. Uh, you know, I know that his googly kind of requires him to bowl it a bit slower, but it would be to, to my to my mind if he could develop a quicker one. Doesn't even have to move that much. I think that would be useful for him so that he could have that variation. Uh, other thing to watch out for: I noticed that to left uh, left-handed batters, he's bowling a little bit of a off-spin type action. It seems like um, so he's kind of brought in a new ball. As well, so it's good to see him. Don't tell anyone. No, don't tell anyone. We were saving that for the India series. I can't believe you <laughs> let the cut out of the bag. Oh my gosh, there was no way Hardik was ever going to pick that ball up. <laughs> <laughs> if Hardik is listening, then uh, shout us out, okay? When 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 you when you smash one Hindu for six, uh, no. So I, I think I think it's interesting because. Well, you know, maybe that's what you want in, in the LPL. You want a player of one Indus caliber to be trying new things, right? Because this is kind of the playground. He doesn't have to trot it out at the LPL. He doesn't have to trot it out at the international level. This is the sandbox where you can see, okay, well, this is what works, right? If he gives up a few sixes to Chimindu, great for him, right? This young kid with talent gets a little bit of exposure for Tonking Hasaranga. But I think that's kind of the next step. And I'll just add regarding the... The treatment, I, it, it does make me upset, right? Like, you want a passionate leader. You want someone who cares. And it's clear that when Indu cares about the game, right? If he takes missteps, if he's rash, right? That's the same thing that gives him the confidence to, you know, toss it up and, and bowl googlies where he could get smacked out of the park. As you said, Mark, he's a confidence player. And I just don't think it, it makes sense, and I've said this before, to just dump the captaincy on Charith. Um, I think one Indu has the ability to be a good leader. There's a leader in there. Leaders a lot of times are made over time. You know, this is what Hasaranga has tried for a couple months. Let's see what he does, how he grows, how he reacts. We got to let him be him, right? He's not going to be, he's not going to be Sangha. He's not going to be Mahela. He's going to be one Indu. And that's what's made him a great T20 cricketer. And we kind of have to back that and let him try and let him work on things and let him be his expressive self so he can be that world-class player that he is. 
I'm, got, I'm glad we've got to this because reading through social media and on various cricket forums, which yes, I am on, and yes, I am looking at three o'clock in the morning. Um, it, it feels to me like there's there's a sense among some Shrunker fans that there's going to be you know wholesale changes to the squad now that Mahela and Silver would have left. I just don't think that's going to happen, right? I think there's off off that kind of eighteen that went to the USA. I I largely think maybe fourteen of them, maybe thirteen of them, will be in the next squad. And I think it might be, you know, a couple of them will drop out through form or because whoever picks the squad next, who, who the next selectors are, who the next coaches are, will want slightly different people. I, I think either which way, two people who are definitely going to be in that squad are going to be Wanindu and are going to be Charith. And Absolutely. I think actually moving the captaincy, if that's what happens at this point, when Wanindu's only had it for, what, six months? Yeah. Uh, or, or like in real terms, six months because of, of his injury. Um, is an utterly, it's just a frivolous task. That is just one of those things that happens in shrunken cricket that ultimately just chips away at players' confidences and means that we don't get the best performances that we can get. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, and I mean, it's not as though they're agenda picks. Like, let's not forget the body of work that Hasaranga has behind him, right? It was a year ago that he dominated this tournament in totally yeah. unprecedented style, right? He was, if I remember rightly, the highest run scorer with the best strike rate and the leading wicket taker with the lowest economy, which I don't yeah. think anyone's ever done in any franchise tournament. He's the only Sri Lankan bowler who's made him in, in recent memory since Marlinga retired, who's made himself a star in the IPL and been right at the top of those wicket columns. I mean, this guy's a wreck talent a generational talent who's going through coming off the back of some bad injuries going through a slight dip in confidence and form and yeah he needs to be backed i think taking the captaincy away from him now would be the worst thing that sri lanka could do and i think we all need to get in when Hindus camp because a fit firing confident hasaranga is arguably the best thing that sri lankan cricket can have right now yep uh, talking about moving away from the LPL and going leaning more into the national team conversation because, you know, there is an India tour straight off the back of this. Um, have you guys seen any other names apart from Chris Rogers in the kind of frame for, for the, the Sri Lanka job? Because, you know, they're going to have to appoint someone reasonably soon if they are hoping to, to fill it. And I don't know if it, it you know, they might just be a caretaker team for... I wouldn't be surprised by a stopgap coach and um, I wouldn't be hugely surprised if that was Ramesh Ratnaika. He's done the job before. He's been around the setup a long time. Um, there was another name that was mentioned. I can't remember. Another I, local coach. I really, I really, I really hope it isn't Ramesh. Not yeah. because I've got anything against him because I just don't want him to leave the women's team at right. this point. I don't think they're full they're, of... They're yeah. I mean, you say that, Dom. This is Sri Lanka cricket. <laughs> Absolutely for, anything can happen. And I think for it, a I caretaker think it job, I think they'll do it. I, I think I could imagine them appointing him as full time head coach, right? I could see him them doing that. The other person is, you know, I, I wonder if the, the other names that come to my head are people who are on the island right now, right? So we're thinking of someone like Kandabi as as someone who potentially you know, he was the batting coach. Though I, I don't really understand how, if you're looking at the team and you're saying, okay, let's elevate the guy who was in charge of the batting of this unit, <laughs> doesn't really make sense. Um, and then Graham Ford is around, right? He's the head coach of the of the Gall Marbles. So those guys are both guys who could potentially, I could see Graham Ford saying, okay, I'll, I'll do an interim post for a few months. I don't want to take it for three or four years, but um, I'll do an interim thing so those are the those are two names that come to the top of my head right now i'm, I'm oh gosh i just kind of hope that they get this sorted out sooner rather than later the idea yeah. that they pull apart the women's team i mean i said last around i said I, I don't want them to do it nick's brought it up as something that they might do i th i think they still might do it because essentially look i don't want to, i'm gonna offend people right but shrunker is not a society which doesn't have misogyny dripping all the way through it, right? And if one aspect of Sri Sh Lankan society is more misogynistic than any others, it's definitely around sports administration, right? So if, like, there are people who will be saying, 
let's take him across. Let's move that whole team because it's all local coaches and they're all work for SLC. It wouldn't be that difficult for them to do it. And let's move them over to, to the men's side. I just think, considering they the women have got a tour of um, Ireland coming up, then they've got an Asia Cup uh, coming up, then they've got the World Cup. They're looking really good. Please, SLC, do not do that. Please, if we need to, if I need to do a, a, a prayer visual or something or pilgrimage where I go and visit, uh, you know, sites or all the major world religions, then I'll, ha- I'll happily have to do it because I just think that the women's side is looking in great shape at the moment. It could be, you know, it could be a magical moment for them at the World Cup of results. They can get put performances in key moments that something special could happen. And I don't, I really don't want them to rip it up. So I, I look, I, I don't want them to put those coaches in the position where they go, right, lads, we're going to have to take you for this India tour to to take the men. I think that's that would be a terrible a terrible moment for a terrible decision for those guys to have to make, right? Because everyone involved in it's been uh, a great servant of shrunken cricket. So I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> uh, guys, should we leave it there for today? Um, if you've got Perfect. this far in and, and you haven't subscribed. I don't know what else we can do. Hit the subscribe button. Um, if you want to leave us a comment, please do. Who do you think should be the next Shrunken Coach? Who's impressed you from the LPL thus far? Um, and also, we're, we're growing all the time. So share this content with all your other Shrunken cricket-loving friends and family. We've been the Morelli End. We'll be back next, well, back next week. Back very soon. I can't tell you when. Next time something happens to Shrunken Cricket. This is Shrunken Cricket. Something could happen in the next hour. We don't know. See you all (laughs) later. Bye.